I started texting my Christian friends, my friends from Maps, and said, I need to hear the words. I need prayer. And my phone started ringing. Hi, I am Sonia Delaney, and this is my story. I live in Scottsdale for about 15 years, and I met my husband at Scottsdale Bible Church. Uh, we have three little boys, uh, Austin, he's five, and twins that will turn three this week. Blake and Colton, so A, B, C, and our last name starts with D, Delaney, and I'm just a really busy mom. I love to take my boys to activities, and we're always, you know, leaving the house, going to the children's museum, and lots of different play dates. I was in the best shape of my life when I went to sleep on New Year's Eve. I went to bed writing out what I'm going to do for 2012. I like, I should set the bar a little bit higher, maybe do a, you know, triathlon or some extreme marathon, you know, because I was feeling great. New Year's Day, my husband and I get up and we're like, let's go for a run. We're, gonna, we're running up to about six miles and we get the kids strapped in two different strollers, a double stroller and a single stroller. And I was like, let me run in really quick. Um, you know, just want to empty my bladder before we leave. And I, you know, ran in the house and I knew something was wrong when I emptied my bladder, like something extremely painful where it about, you know, took my breath away. And I went to the couch. I couldn't even go out and tell my husband in the garage, like, I can't make it. Like I knew something was wrong. And um, from that point forward, I just started to get extremely ill. And so my husband takes me to the hospital, into the ER, and um, we have our little boys with us, all three of them. And they start running tests, and immediately my room was flooded with doctors. They are like, you are in kidney failure. And they are like, you have a massive tumor growing in your bladder, and something's wrong with your gallbladder. And you looks like you have an infection in your bloodstream. So it was like very serious, like immediately, as soon as I went in there, like you should have never waited so long to come in. And so I woke up and I remember just looking, seeing the bright lights and asked my husband, what was it? Like, was it cancer? And he's, it's cancer. So I go back 30 days later, I have the surgery, I, I wake up, they show me, they make pictures of inside your organs. That's pretty interesting and I could tell why, what it looked like there was cancer back in my bladder. Within 30 days, it had grown back to be ag aggressive, stage two. I was just praying, God, get me through this, each second to get through a minute. So I get to the next minute, and um, I started texting my Christian friends, my friends from Mops, and said, I need to hear the words. I need prayer. I know you're praying for me, but I need to hear it. And my phone started ringing. And no one called at the same time. God lined them up. One, two, three, four, five calls. And my friends prayed over me, and it was just what I needed. It was like immediate. When I was in the hospital, uh, my table leader for MOPS uh, rallied up a meal plan for, I think it was like five weeks. And people signed up for my MOPS group I was part of a couple years ago, and for my current MOPS group at SBC. And every day, a mom was dropping off food for my family. Sometimes it was breakfast, sometimes it was dinner, but I mean, it was such a blessing and relieved so much pressure from me and just to see the hearts of those women. And sometimes I was too sick or I wasn't even home, I was at the hospital for surgeries, but just to hear those women's voice in my house. And I was like, I know they left their family and their kids and they have a lot to do and they made a meal for my family. Like it was very touching. One night we thought I wasn't gonna be able to have surgery and my mother-in-law needed to leave our house by four o'clock to get to her job. And then they, as soon as she needed to leave for work, they came in and said, we're taking your wife into surgery. This is my second surgery. So my husband's like, what do I do? I was like, well, there's this girl at my mop's table. <laughs> Let's call her. And she was able to come over and she didn't even know my children. And so the twins, they look alike. And you know, they're only two at that time. So we wouldn't tell her who was Blake and who was Colton. <laughs> So she's like, I don't know, and they slept in different bedrooms, so she didn't know who, where to put them to bed. So it was kind of funny, you know. She said they would just giggle, like, that's Blake, or I'm Colton, but they'll tell you the wrong names. Just to see, like, all those relationships that you've grown and um, just all the fellowship, like, coming back to you, it's pretty awesome. The fact that I got bladder cancer is more rare than someone getting struck by lightning. Like, it's completely unexplainable. There's nothing in my history. I'm not a smoker. People that get bladder cancer are usually senior age men that have been lifetime smokers or exposed to chemicals. 
We finally had our victory that just recently that the doctor said, you know, we're no longer need to see me. Like, you're in remission. There's no reason to worry. There's lots of things I take away from this. Um, one is to follow up with your health care. If you think something's wrong with your health, just, you know, you're your own best advocate. And the other thing I learned is to car dance more often. <laughs> you know, just live in the moment and enjoy today because you don't know what could strike you down tomorrow. God has a plan and you just have to trust in Him. And whatever His plan is, I know something great's going to come out of this. And I just want to be His vessel.